All right, so switching gears, here's a piece of a tumor. Again, it's a, it's a big, deep, soft tissue mass. Anyone uh, want to take a stab at what this might be? That's fine. Okay. Yes. So that's a it's a good differential. Yeah, any anyone else can chime in if you have different ideas. I'm not sure what much else would uh would think of for this, but oh let me show you there's one area I want you to see that is probably no one pay attention to because this stuff is much more interesting to look at here and much more classic. But look at this area here. This area is kind of different. There's no alveoli here, right? There's like kind of these rounded epithelioid or almost rhabdoid cells arranged in multiple little clusters or nodules, almost almost a touch Zellball in looking, really. Um, I, when you see a tumor composed totally of stuff like this, you could certainly think of like a paraganglioma a little bit, at least I have on ones that look like this. But when we have this, I don't think paraganglioma would really be the differential here. But yeah, this is alveolar soft part sarcoma. These are exceptionally rare, um, even among sarcomas. Um, in many sarcomas, I see a lot of them in my practice. I'll say I see mixofibrous sarcoma maybe, or uh, liposarcomas a couple times a month, I'd say. I've seen two alveolar soft part sarcomas in eight years of practice, and I saw a couple in my one-year fellowship. They're very, very rare. Um, they, I think the biggest differential at this is between metastatic renal cell carcinoma, because there are some forms of renal cell carcinoma that can have a lot of overlapping features, and I'm not a genitourinary pathologist, but but I definitely have seen some times where you could have overlap there. Um, the, the, a very common thing that um, is talked about in the differential because of this alveolar pattern, and so this is what's meant by alveolar for anyone who's watching this that's, that's a junior or a beginning, is these spaces that are open in the center and lined by cells on the outside, just like the alveolar air sacs in the lung, right? So the idea though is that this is basically, these tumors actually start as kind of solid nests and then in the middle, the cells fall down, fall apart and break down kind of and become loose and, and discohesive. And then the cells are retained around the edges where you have the, the vascular uh, channels in between them. And that, that vascular channel between these kind of nested look, that's what gives it kind of the look that mimics renal cell carcinoma, I think. Um, but yeah, the, so these are not like really true alveoli, they're like pseudo alveolar um, spaces. Now that same thing is what happens in alveolar rhabdomyosarcoma that these nests fall apart, but there's one big difference at what is the main cell type of alveolar rhabdomyosarcoma? Anyone want to answer? Like if you had to describe it in one category, you know, for low power, what would you think of? This is kind of a read my mind sort of question. Well, I'll... Well, only some of the cells usually. So in alveolar rhabdomyosarcoma, you will get some scattered cells that can look kind of rhabdoid and have eosinophilic cytoplasm like this. But the you may see striations, although they're often pretty hard to find, but sometimes you will. But they're mainly, they're a small round blue cell tumor. Most of the cells in alveolar rhabdo are round blue cells actually. And, and then they fall apart. And so they leave and out, make an alveolar architecture, but most of the cells making up the lesion, and Van has probably seen a lot more alveolar rhabdos than I have as a pediatric pathologist, but the majority of the alveolar rhabdos that I've seen predominantly look like a round blue cell tumor and they can have like solid pattern where they don't make the alveolar spaces. So to me, actually, even though a lot of people think of ASPS, alveolar soft part sarcoma and alveolar rhabdo in the same differential, I feel like usually they look pretty different, actually. They do make alveolar spaces, but the cells, if all the cells look this pink, pink or clear or pale looking, large, plump cells with big nuclei, um, and there's no round blue cells, then it's probably an alveolar soft part sarcoma, not an alveolar uh, rhabdomyosarcoma. sarcoma. That's the way I've always thought of it, at least. Okay, I added this in after the, um, after the lecture so that you could see a comparison or a contrast, rather, between alveolar soft part sarcoma and this tumor, which is alveolar rhabdomyosarcoma. See how different they look from low power? Yes, there are alveolar spaces right here where the solid nests of tumor cells start falling apart. 
and uh, there's a single layer lying in the outside and then a bunch of tumor cells floating in the middle. So it has that in common with alveolar soft part sarcoma, but that's pretty much where the similarities end. Otherwise, this tumor looks more or less like a round blue cell tumor to me most of the time. Sometimes they do have clear or eosinophilic cytoplasm, but it's usually in a subset of the tumor cells and they can have solid areas like this. Uh, that's actually an important thing to keep in mind. So you, I'll give a, a closer look here at the alveolar spaces. You can see they look mostly round and blue with relatively minimal cytoplasm in most of the cells. Even closer look. And that's a really great classic example. And in between the nests, you have this prominent fibrous, uh, fibrovascular um, uh, septa that are dividing each of the nests from each other. So there's a fibrous tissue with a prominent vessel that subdivides each of the nests, even in the solid areas, finding that fibrovascular septation between pockets of round blue cells is a characteristic feature. Here's some necrosis right there in the middle of the tumor. And then up at the top, if I recall, let me see if I can find the place again. Oh, here's some more of the uh, pseudo-alveolar spaces. And there are a few cells in this one, if I recall, that were kind of pink. Ah, there they are. See those guys? There are a couple cells that have prominent eosinophilic cytoplasm, and sometimes you'll find actually plump rhabdomyoblasts or strap cell type rhabdomyoblasts in alveolar rhabdomyosarcoma, but I think the best way to learn it is it is a small round blue cell tumor that makes alveolar spaces and then has variable amounts of eosinophilic cells scattered in, to, in the midst of it. Now, I don't see these very often. They, I feel like they often get seen by pediatric pathologists, at least in the areas where I've practiced. And so I only have encountered a, a relatively small number of cases. So I'm certainly not a world expert on rhabdomyosarcoma or anything like that. But from the ones I've seen, they're round blue cell. Here's another example that's, I think, even more dramatic for how much of a round blue cell tumor it is. I mean, look, you would look at this at first and you might think of Ewing sarcoma or something like that. But then here you see the fibrovascular septa in between dividing the cells apart and then a layer of cells clinging to those septa and then falling apart discohesion of cells in the midst of the tumor. And this case also, I'm gonna show you one other feature. I know the point of this was not to show you everything about rhabdomyosarcoma. I'll have to save that for another video. But these cells right here are relatively characteristic multinucleated tumor giant cells. And they often have um, eosinophilic cytoplasm with kind of a ring of nuclei around the outside. And they're a relatively um, characteristic finding for alveolar rhabdomyosarcoma. But again, they look quite different, I think, from the cells of alveolar soft part sarcoma. So I hope that helps uh, clarify to be able to see alveolar soft part sarcoma and alveolar rhabdomyosarcoma back to back. Okay, back to the original video. And unfortunately, this slide I uploaded, I think I must have scanned it only at 20x and not 40. So the nuclei of these cells are big and, um, and they often have these little notches taken out of them. And I wish I could show it closer, but see how there's a kind of a little notch, a little divot. So what, um, what uh, Mark Edgar, one of my um, awesome soft tissue mentors, he said that they look like an, an apple with a bite taken out of it. And if you go get a chance to look real close up, and I wish I would have scanned this higher res, um, but uh, the scanner that I had access to previously sometimes had some trouble with high res, you will often find these little notches or divots taking out of the nuclei um, in alveolar soft part sarcoma, a really nice uh, subtle pearl uh, from Mark Edgar, uh, who taught me many kind of awesome pearls like that. All right, I recorded this after the uh, lecture and I wanted to insert it into the video so that you could see a better example of the um, so-called apple bite cells of Edgar um, in honor of my mentor, Mark Edgar, who first taught me that term. And it's a pretty useful um, clue for alveolar soft part sarcoma. You can see these indentations taken out of the nuclei like someone, someone took a bite out of an apple and tossed it aside. Let's go in for a closer look, see if we can get them in focus here. If you focus up and down, you can see that basically what this is, that they're notched or indented nuclei, but I like the, the visual analogy that someone took a bite out of an apple. And not all alveolar soft part sarcomas have them, but I feel like you often do see some degree of indentation or kind of crinkling of the nucleus. See how there's like a little, a little dent right here. These guys have multiple dents, like someone took a bunch of bites out of them. Um, so this is a pretty good good example, but I had to go and pull through my collection and some of the cases of alveolar soft part sarcoma in my archive study sets 
uh, didn't really have this very good. So it's clearly not a, a well-developed feature in every case, but I think it's kind of helpful. And, and plus, I just thought it was a really good analogy for, um, for remembering this feature. Um, apple bite cells uh, in the nuclei of alveolar soft part sarcoma. The other thing that's a little unusual is what's the, what's the molecular abnormality with, um, with this tumor? Anyone know the genes involved? It is. Yeah, it's X17, right? It's uh, the chromosome X with the TFE3 gene. And remember that TFE3, so it will stain positive in the majority of alveolar soft part sarcomas um, is a nuclear stain, but it also can be seen in other things, okay? So there's a, a variety of other entities that can have TFE3 expression. So it's not a totally specific thing here. Now, I think the main thing is when I see something that looks like classic alveolar soft part sarcoma, the main thing I want to do is do keratin or maybe Pax8 or something to make sure that I've excluded the possibility of metastatic renal cell carcinoma, which is, of course, going to be much, much more common than alveolar soft part sarcoma. Oh, can you mean, you mean could alveolar soft part sarcoma look a little like a granular cell tumor? Oh, yes, some of the cells could look a little granular. But the, the big difference for me is that granular cell tumors usually are not well circumscribed. They are really trickly at their edges, particularly when they're in the dermis. Um, they, infil they look like they infiltrate, they intercalate is the word I like to use, um, in an interstitial pattern in between the collagen bundles. And when they get down in the muscle, they do the same thing. They just kind of splay apart all the fibers and they make this nice syncytial sheet of cells. Um, and I think I've got a short video about granular cell tumor on my channel. But the, uh, alveolar soft part, on the other hand, is very nicely arranged into very circumscribed nests. And so that's, uh, that's a big difference. Um, even though you're right, they could look a little granular in their cytoplasm. So, so uh, this is alveolar soft part sarcoma. The other things that are kind of worth noting, um, we talked about it being rare. Let's see, RCC. The other thing is, look, right here, we've got a vascular channel plugged full of tumor. How often do you see lymphovascular invasion in sarcomas? Well, I'll tell you, not very often, okay? It's pretty rare. Even though we know that sarcomas must spread through the blood, the, the theory is that they're hematogenously spread, the majority of them at least, because they metastasize the lungs first, usually. Um, but even so, we don't often see them actually invading the vessels in the excision specimen. I've seen it a handful of times in different sarcomas, but not common. But alveolar soft part sarcoma is one where on a, you can regularly find um, a vascular invasion. And also it's strange that in addition to metastasizing the lungs, it can go to weird sites like the brain. Most sarcomas do not metastasize to the brain. Alveolar soft part sarcoma does though sometimes. Um, so it's kind of a strange tumor in many different ways. And I've met some people online through support groups who had alveolar soft part sarcoma and, and their course was relatively delayed even once they had metastases. They still live for quite a long time, but the long-term prognosis of this is very guarded. A lot of patients develop, I can't remember what the exact percentage is now, but a lot of patients develop metastases once they get these. So they can be a very problematic uh, tumor and one to always be on the lookout for. And do remember that sometimes they can be composed totally of solid nests without good alveolar spaces. And I, it seems like, I, if I recall, one of my mentors said that they felt like they saw that more often in younger patients, that younger patients had like kind of a more cellular tumor that had not opened up into alveolar spaces yet. Um, I, I just have not seen enough to actually know if that, uh, how well that comparison works. But in any case, just remember that when they're solid, you could really struggle, I think, with recognizing that they have, um, that they're alveolar soft part sarcoma. And, um, and I think that they, when they're solid, they can really look zellwallen and really mimic paraganglioma. So I always try to keep ASPS in mind and a differential when I'm thinking of paraganglioma and vice versa. I was never really taught that, but I definitely saw a few cases in training that confused me. Oh, and the one other thing is that if you've, if you've watched some of my videos, you know probably that I like to harp on the fact that the vast majority of translocation, balanced translocation sarcomas have uniform monotonous nuclei, not pleomorphism. But one exception is alveolar soft part sarcoma, that it can have scattered random big pleomorphic cells, even though it's a translocation tumor. I don't know why that is, but I've seen uh, several of the cases I saw had pleomorphic tumor cells just like this here. And that kind of random pleomorphism, again, could make you wonder about a paraganglioma or something, although the nuclear chromatin is not really good for paraganglioma here, but certainly it'd be worth thinking. So, um, okay, that's alveolar soft part sarcoma. Any questions?